Hello, in this screencast I'm going to show you how to make an isoplot map. So what I have on here are data points. Um, for an example, these might be contamination concentrations in groundwater based on different wells. So each X would be a different well. Um, likewise, if we were maybe looking at air pressure. These could be different measurements of air pressure in isobars. So there's a lot of different things this could be. It could also be contours that we might put on a topographic map and then these would just be elevations maybe in feet and we're going to do it. It doesn't really matter. The whole process of making an isoplot map is the same no matter what type of unit you're using. What you're basically doing is trying to draw out and identify areas where you have uh, different values that are the same so you can see where things are high or low, um, whether that's concentrations of a contaminant, elevations on a map, or air pressure on a, a weather map. So there's a couple, you know, lots of different uses. Um, so what we're doing, if we look at here, we have a different, a bunch of different sites with different measurements. And what we need to do is draw ISO lines, okay, showing areas that have the same values. And usually these are drawn um, on units of like every 10, so 10, 20, 30, 40. Um, occasionally you'll see it going up by 20s or 40s, just depending on this the data that you see on your map. In this case, we have everything from 1, there's a 10, a 9, a 3, a 15, 43, 34, 80, 50, and 31. So here, using values going up by factors of 10 would be useful. So what I like to do is identify the place where the data are the highest. So in this case, 80 is the highest data point that I have. Now, 80 would be sitting on top of one of the ISO lines that we have. So I'm going to make that the top. And basically, I, I'm working right now in Adobe Illustrator. You can do this on paper, by hand, whatever's easier. I'm, I'm only doing this in Adobe Illustrator because I can record it on my screen. So I've got a little pencil. And I would say, okay, well, there's a 50 here. That's the next highest value. There's a 43. This 34 is going to kind of keep things tight on this side. And this 31 is over here. So these two are going to be fairly close to each other. But again, we're starting with 80. So I'd say there's probably a circle something like maybe that. Okay. And it's just an estimation. Everybody will get something a little different. Now I see that there's a 50. And this 50, we're going to have to close a circle. 34 is lower, so it's going to go down, and 43 is above. So we're going to have to have a 70 and a 60 somewhere in here, and then a 50. Um, what I want to work on is I'm going to need to have a 40 separating out this 40 and the 30s, and then that would come around this side. So I'm just going to draw some things in to try to show myself where these points would go. I think the 50 would probably, let's see, we'll just do the 70 first to keep it in order. 70 is probably going somewhere around like this. Okay. And then there's probably a 60 in here. And there's that 60. And then this is the 50, so that would come around. Okay, so again, so this is showing between this line that's right now highlighted in blue and this line are all the values between 50 and 60. These are values between 60 and 70, 70 and 80, and this is anything over 80. Okay, now we have a 40. 43 is above the 40, and 34 is below. So we need to have a line that runs somewhere. Whoops. That was supposed to be around it, but my finger slipped. So our 40 might be something like that. Um, I'm going to actually try to see if I can move this point because I just want to point out that that 40 is not sitting there. I just shifted the whole thing because I am, again, an illustrator. So again, 43 is higher than 40, so it's sitting above. Usually this would be smoothed out, um, and I would spend some time working on that. If pencil, I'd erase it. So then we're going to have a 30 somewhere in here. Oops. Again, you can see my fingers kind of... A little bumpy on the trackpad. So put a 30 in, close that up. 
31 should be pretty close to the line. 34 will be farther away. Now we need to get a 20 in here. Whoops. Let's see if I can make it so my finger doesn't wiggle so much. And now sometimes these lines go off the page. That's okay. You know, maybe we'll just finish drawing this. So there's the 20. And then we can see there's actually a 10. This needs to go through that data point kind of close to the nine. Whoops, again, apologize for the shaky hand. There's the 15. Okay, so 15 is greater than 10. Nine is close. And then the next one we would have would be a zero. Well, this is a one and a three, so we'd have some sort of zero probably down here. Whoops, and again, like that. Okay, and so then this is showing me if this is concentrations of a contaminant that this is likely where the source is and then things are spreading out. Um, sometimes we'll think, see things have more of a flow. If it's air pressure, this would be the area of high air pressure. Or if we're looking at topography, this would be our hill and this would be going down slope. Um, so I hope that helps you understand how to draw isolines in on an isoplot map. And remember that there are lots of different types of isoplot maps, including contour maps, uh, concentration maps, uh, air pressure, etc. I hope this was helpful.